Hi, how are you? Good, my name is Dr. K, so I'm gonna be here to check up on you and to be giving you a full cranial nerve exam. Okay, so what brings you in today? Uh-huh, a throbbing headache. How long has this been going on? Okay, okay a couple weeks. Let's look over here. And I would like to ask you your date of birth and your full name. Okay. Okay, great. And when's the last time that you had a checkup here? Okay, so it's been a little while. All right. Okay, can you tell me, do you have anything that you know of that you think might have started this headache? Anything that you've been experiencing that comes to mind? Okay, your finals. It's been finals week. I remember college was really hard, so uh, I totally have empathy for finals week headaches. Let's try to let's try to rule out other more serious symptoms, and then we can get you on a protocol of treatment. So, are you on any medications right now? Okay, you're on antidepressant and we're asleep. Okay, great. How are those working out for you? Oh, that's fantastic. That's good to hear. Okay, great. And are you taking anything right now for your headache? Motrin, okay. Have you tried ibuprofen? Okay, ibuprofen-based medications tend to be a little better for headaches and tend to be stronger, so we might look into that. Obviously, not a long-term solution, but we want to get you feeling better as soon as possible, so. Let's do a full exam and then I'll give you the results. Sounds good. Okay, so first I wanna give you a color examination. So I have these two colors here. I want you to look at the orange pen and ignore the pink, 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 ignore the pink. There you go. Ignoring the pink. Good. Good, very good. Okay, I see you have a very sharp focus, so I want you to tell me now. Oh what color this is, what color this is, what color is this, what color is this, very good, what color is this, what color is this, what color is this, very good, okay, okay, I'm going to do a couple more on you, okay, I want you to tell me what color is this, 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 very good, very good, so your, your color seems to be intact, your field of vision in terms of motion seems to be very healthy, very normal, so we're going to move on. Okay, now I'm going to be looking at your eye, and also we're going to be doing a sensations test. So I want you to come here. Okay, I'm going to pull into the lid. Okay. Alright, let's see. Okay, look up for me please, thank you. Healthy, very pink underlining, not too many veins showing, so that's good. Oh, please look up, thank you. Okay. Uh huh, very good. Good, so that seems to be healthy and normal. Now we're gonna do some sensations. So, first of all, I want you to close your eyes for me. Good. And tell me where you feel this. Okay, good. Where do you feel this? Okay, good. And right here, where do you feel this? Good. And here? Great. Okay, and which side of your face do you feel the sensation on? Okay, wonderful. And which side of your face do you feel the sensation on? Very good. Okay. Alright, that's great. So, everything's looking great so far. So now I want to test the severity of sensations that you feel in your face. So, in a moment, I'm going to be giving you two sensations. This is dull. This is sharp. Okay? So whenever you feel the sensation on your face, I want you to take a moment and let me know if what you felt was the dullness or that sharpness, okay? Don't, don't know if you think this. <laughs> okay, it's just... All right, all right, so close your eyes. Relax, breathe. Okay, good, so. And now. Okay, great, and now. Okay, good, yep, that was two in a row, very good. So what about now? Okay, okay, and. 
now. Very good. Okay, so you can open your eyes now. That went really well, so you got all the answers right. So what I'm going to do now is pulpate your face. I'm going to make sure that everything feels good. I'm checking for any lumps or bumps or anything that might stick out and, and might get up, give us some um, sense that there might be an external situation going on. I don't see that on you. you. Your face looks very symmetrical and normal, but it's always good to check and do that deep sensation test. So you can go ahead and relax. You can close your eyes if you want or leave them open and look at me. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, let me go a little bit in the back of your neck, back of your scalp. Very good. All right, I'm feeling for your lymph nodes. I want to make sure that there are no enlarged glands. Good, just relax, relax. Very good. Okay, very good. I'm feeling that again in the back of the head here, because I thought I felt a little bump. No. No, that's not. Okay, very good. Just a little massage here, because <laughs> massages always seem to help headaches under any circumstances. So we had that going. All right, very good. I'm gonna percuss your face right now. So just relax. You're just gonna feel a light tapping. A lot of people tend to be fans of this one because it's it's kind of it's like a gentle massage. So. All that went very well. Okay, now I'm gonna check your sinuses, feeling for any sensitivities in your sinuses. Have you been experiencing any kind of runny nose or dry mouth or anything in, in your um, nasal cavity? That's good, I'm gonna go ahead and feel it. So you're just gonna, there we go, good job. Okay, and I'm going down, feeling the rest of your neck and face. Feeling any kind of all your sinus cavities, they seem to be all lined up. Okay, very good. When's the last time that you had a cold or flu? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because a lot of times when you have headaches and especially those throbbing pains, what it actually can be is a buildup of sinuses. So, what I could do is get you on that sort of medication if the ibuprofen doesn't work. So we'll be considering that option today, okay? Very good. And uh, oddly enough, um, sometimes when you have, especially if the if the pain is going to your ear, oh, it is going to your ear. Okay. So I would. This sounds crazy, but I will look into a Mucinex prescription because a lot of times that fluid buildup is the reason for those headaches. And uh, people that experience fluid buildup, like a lot of times they have a stuffy nose, but sometimes it's very. Um, uh, backed up to the point where you do start to feel it in those deep cavities here Okay, so we could definitely be looking into that today. All right, great. Okay, we're gonna do some further vision tests So I want you to Look at the orange. Look at the orange. Look at the orange. Okay. Don't be distracted by my finger. Look at the orange Look at the orange. Very good Okay Okay, very good Orange. Keep your eyes on the orange. Okay, lovely. Okay, that's great. How many fingers am I holding up right now? Okay, and now try again. Okay, okay, very good. And here, and so I'm going to cover your eye then. So you just tell me with your left eye. How many fingers? Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. So everything seems to be intact. What I'm thinking right now is that you may be having a stress headache. And so we're going to get you on some ibuprofen, but also some meditation techniques it can be absolutely fabulous. So do you do any meditation right now? Okay. 
Okay, well, meditation can take form in many different forms. So, if you are someone that doesn't like the whole idea of sitting and meditating and staring at a point or being still, meditation can be done while walking, okay? Because I know that you mentioned that you're a very active person. I think that's great. But I would just, I would just take some time to take your phone off, turn it off when you go on your walks, and just be mindful. So mindful walking means that you are just very present in the moment, looking at all the sensations, all the uh, external stimuli around you, leaves on the trees, things like that, and just really zeroing in on what is in front of you, as opposed to your worries. Okay. So a lot of times we tend to, oh, I'm stressed about my finals. I'm very, very worried right now. Um, I'm going to be thinking about that. When in reality, if you look at the situation around you, you're not taking your finals. Are you taking your finals right now? No. No, you're sitting in the office with a very, very nice and pleasant doctor who wants you to do very well. So there's no immediate threat. So a lot of times you can just think about what the actual immediate threat in the room is, and that can calm you down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, and what is your major, may I ask? Okay, you're an art major? Wow, okay. What was your final? Okay, you had to paint. What did you have to paint? I had to paint a picture of a flower. All right. Oh, was the teacher walking around the room and kind of looking over your shoulder? That can be a point of stress. And in real life, when you're an artist, you don't have to do that. You can go home and you can paint a picture of a flower and you can mess up as many times as you want. So I would consider perhaps switching to a different school where the teacher isn't watching you create your art as a final because art is a very personal thing, right? Right, exactly. And the fact that you're in college for art and that's your major and you're being told exactly what to paint and to paint a flower, that seems very, uh, sorry, elementary school-ish to uh, tell the student exactly what to paint. Now you can practice different techniques like shading and uh, light and three dimensions and um, oil paints and watercolors and things like that, but telling you exactly what to make the subject of your painting, it's a little, um, seems a little odd to me. That's just my unprofessional opinion. Obviously I am a professional, but I am uh, not an art teacher. Okay, I'm sure you did very well though. Oh, you have it coming up. Okay, that's why you have a headache. But, but you're not taking it now. Okay. You're not painting now. You are right here. You're in front of me. Can I ask you more about your stress life? Okay, are you having any stress in life besides um, your finals and your paintings and all that? Okay, the fact that you're... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That you're $50,000 in debt. Mm -hmm. Student loans can be a very huge source of stress, and so most of us have been through that. What I can tell you is that colleges do tend to charge so much for admissions that you can't pay, ever. <laughs> so what you can do is just keep uh, applying for student loan deferments. There are different kinds. You can apply for hardship deferments. You can apply for the initial first 10 years of just deferring your payments, okay? And then, eventually, we will be under a leadership where the student loans will be forgiven. So that's a really good thing. So if I were you, I would just relax about those payments and not worry about making them, especially now that you're still in school. Okay. Yes. Yes. And what are your plans for after school? Oh, you want to move to New York City. I would, I, mm, for those uh, kind of connections. Yes, I understand. Any, any, where's your home base? Oh, Virginia, that's a beautiful state. I would stay in Virginia for a couple years. And then I would maybe go to New York City, but I think mostly Virginia is a good place to be and you have a lot more trees there, right? And everything's online now anyway, so you can just make your art and post it. Online galleries, everyone's uh, very much afraid of going out in public, especially with the whole advent of 
the chupacabra has landed in New York City. Yes, that happened last week. Yes, yeah, so there are actually right now there are three chupacabras, three that are that are in and around New York City. And so what they do usually is they do take small animals and rats and they bite into their neck and just suck all the blood out of these animals, which is a good thing for this for the city, keeping the New York City area clean uh, to have those chupacabras, but they were not invited by the mayor. No one asked the chupacabras to come. It was usually believed that they thrived in more warm climates like the South and like Mexico. So the fact that there are a few now in New York City, a lot of people are caught off guard because they're not they're not the best to look at okay these these are very menacing looking creatures they look like half dog half godzilla kind of creatures and they are about you know nine feet tall yeah these are big chupacabras <laughs> yes yes and they do suck blood they, they leave humans alone but it's a problem so when people go out in new york city and walk down the street now there is kind of a chaos unlike the likes of which has ever been seen before. So um, during the pandemic, during the times of uh, the wars and all that, a lot of people in New York City were afraid to go outside. And now, now it's worse than ever because of the chupacabras. So they're doing a lot of online art galleries. So if I were you, I would stay in Virginia. Oh, you don't want to move back in with your parents? Oh, I understand that. Yes. Yes. So do your parents by any chance live in a barn? No, they don't live in a barn. They live in a house. Okay. Is there a barn in the back of the house that perhaps you can move into as sort of like a coach house situation? Okay. Okay. No barn at all. None. You just live in a regular neighborhood. See, I was under the impression that everyone that lived in Virginia did have a barn and a farmyard, but I guess that's not true. Okay, well, see, I'm learning too, so I'm, I'm giving you advice, and then you're teaching me more about the world, so this is turning out to be a really great and helpful appointment. Yes. So what are your options then? Could you stay in the state and then, and then move? There are some apartments in town. That's good. That's good. I would work on getting an apartment in town and then maybe traveling to New York City and coming back, you know, but I would wear your um, a snowsuit and hazmat gear and just a lot of layers because the chupacabra, um, they are very detracted from like puffy figures. So if you make yourself as puffy as possible and actually order like a, from a Halloween store or even if you have enough money to order a, a true um, astronaut suit from NASA, that would be wonderful because then you could go into New York City, you could go on that bus, and you can be very, very puffy, and that way the chupacabra will leave you alone. I mean, they haven't, there hasn't been any um, human deaths or human even injuries, but there was one occasion when the medium-sized chupacabra, they're all very large, but one is nine feet tall, the other one is nine foot six, and the other is nine foot eight, so... Um, but the nine foot six one walked up to a little old lady who, you know, was just wearing her regular clothes and, and just started kind of like blowing bubbles with its saliva in the face of that woman. And that was hard because it was a form of harassment, you know, to have a chupacabra come up to you and just start blowing bubbles. That's very unnatural. And, and, uh, if a human were to do that, there would be cause to alert the police, you know, that this creature is harassing me. No one wants to have someone come up to you and blow bubbles like that in your face. It was very strange and odd, especially since that woman was um, extremely, extremely, you know, nice and pleasant and uh, prone to anxiety as well. So she was, she became very anxious. And so what they did was they sent the chupacabra a cease and desist letter okay so they addressed it to the lair of the chupacabra which is underneath the new york subway system but what the police found was that the chupacabra doesn't read yeah so that was a really hard obstacle in this whole process because they tried to get that medium-sized chupacabra to sign the letter but the chupacabra just kind of like looked at it 
and tore it into pieces. Yeah, but it, but it wasn't like a, you know, screw you, New York police. No, it just didn't know what else to do with the letter. So there's been some communication issues between the Chupacabras and the New York City police that, that they're having a lot of back and forth about, you know, how, how do we coexist, right? Because what we want to do is like, these creatures like the Chupacabra, the, um, um, who else? The Bigfoot Yeti, the, um, um, Big Mr. Bam Bam, the, the clown, in, the clown in North Carolina. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes we forget about him. Um, but, but these creatures are, uh, they're very benevolent towards humans. So what, what's been lacking is just some misunderstanding. So we do see these creatures and we do have sightings, but the fact that the sightings are so rare makes us think that these creatures are a threat. And let's face it, they are a threat to other animals, but so far, chupacabras kind of leave humans alone. They just do bizarre things around humans, so. All of that just makes me, here comes my motherly instinct, I just want to protect you and I want to make sure that you don't get freaked out by the chupacabra. Are you not easily afraid? Well, then New York City might be a place for you. Yeah. Yes. No, it, I'm not lying, it is in the news. Yes, on CNN. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, on top of all that, how else is your life? How, how is your um, social life? Do you have a good circle of friends? Oh, that's always good. Great. Okay. And you have a healthy romantic life. Okay. Okay. So just seeing what's out there. That's great. You're so young, so now is the time to just explore and, and just relax. So. Yes, you have this difficult final coming up, or if you already did it, I forgot, but where you're having to draw a flower, and at the end of the day, art is art, okay? You're not performing any surgeries. So I would just relax and get through these years of college, and, and then when you're graduated, you can make whatever art you want, and you can really live wherever you want. Yes, we're free as humans. So, that's good. I also would recommend an animal companion. Do you have any cats or dogs? <sighs> Okay, that's not a good thing. You should get a dog or a cat. Okay. Okay, so your building doesn't allow doesn't allow dogs, but they allow cats. Okay, so I would change buildings. Yeah, so you can get a dog. Dogs are better with the comforting and giving lots of comfort. I would recommend a small dog to start with, like a Shih Tzu or a, um, a Pomeranian. That's a good choice. And I would go from there and just really, really... Um, you know, develop an animal collection, develop a little menagerie of animals. It's, it will only serve you well, I promise. Okay. Oh, what's that? You already are feeling your, your headache starting to feel better. That's good. That's great. So let's go back to that ibuprofen. Are you willing to take ibuprofen? You know, a lot of people are very into the holistic, all natural healing. So I'm glad that you are. I'm going to write down a prescription for extra strength. Ibuprofen? Okay. And so, with that being said, we did talk about the Mucinex. Are you willing to take that? Okay, I wrote you a prescription for nighttime and daytime Mucinex because daytime Mucinex, it does work the best, but it, it has a, um, a, uh, um, stimulant effect, so we don't want to take that at night. So they have a different ones for night that doesn't work as well, but it's better than nothing. Take that for 10 days. Take your ibuprofen for a week. No more than two pills a day because you're pretty small in size, so we want to make sure that you're not causing any damage. You can drink alcohol, but very lightly, okay? And if you do, because I remember what college is like, you do go to parties and drink a lot. On those days, just don't take the ibuprofen, okay? Because we want to make sure that your liver and kidneys are healthy and that you're not going to run into any issues with that because that would make everything worse, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that's great. That's great. Do you smoke cigarettes? I'm so glad. Okay, no vaping? Perfect, perfect. 
great so this is a stress headache i'm so glad you came in because it's always better to be safe than sorry but you my dear are extremely healthy and you are you look like you're doing really well and you just need to learn how to deal with stress a little better and be kind to yourself when those headaches come be gentle take a bath m do some walking and meditation and you are just gonna be doing really well for yourself okay okay all right can we schedule an appointment for next week just for a follow-up yes okay so what time would work for you Wednesday okay 3 p.m. okay great so I put you in the schedule and we will see you next week. I personally won't be here, but there might be another doctor. Oh, you wanna see me? Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Well then let's get Kayani on Thursday. Would Thursday work for you? Okay, let's do Thursday. And on Thursday I have a 1 p.m. and a 5. 5, because you have class at 1. Beautiful, okay. Well, have a good rest of the week and I'll be thinking of you with your finals. And uh, we'll talk and we'll see how it all goes. All right, all right, bye.